speak to all of you. Uh, I wish that you all would have been with us in person hote and we could have welcomed you uh, here in the building. Uh, first of all, Numan, can I use my slides? Can I use the share screening if possible? Or should I just speak to the students? Sir, sir, why not? Sir? It's entirely up to you, sir. Okay, so I actually prepared some slides in the morning. <laughs> They are hurriedly prepared. But nevertheless, I'll, I'd like to show you. But, but before I begin, uh, I would very much like to echo uh, the, the sort of the passion uh, that has been expressed by our dean. And I distinctly remember the days that when myself and Sabi, we began our journey at UET together uh, many years back. And I wish that we were welcome with, the, <laughs> with a similar passion. Although we, we, we were lucky enough to be uh, exposed to many things that you would be exposed to uh, uh, in, in the next few years. So I consider you to be very, very lucky to have a dean uh, as passionate as Sabi and, and of course all the teachers and, and the facilities that, that are offered by alums uh, and the wonderful opportunity that is awaiting you. So um, I have been asked by, uh, uh, by Dr. Sabi to speak a little bit about the relationship between science and engineering. And in particular, why do we call this as a school of science and engineering? Why not just a school of science or a school of engineering? Um, Naman, so I, I, I cannot uh, uh, share my slides. Uh, they have been disabled. If you can just enable my screen sharing, I, I can do that. Now. I just let me know when I, when I, whenever that is possible. So I would like to speak a little bit about, about this. I mean, we are in a very sort of a unique situation. Uh, where usually you go to choose your major from the very first day you, when you go to a typical university in Pakistan. Here you are coming into not only just a school of engineering, but actually a school of science and engineering. So why put all this together into un, under one roof? Uh, let me try if I can just, uh, okay, it's working now. So can somebody uh, uh, sort of uh, confirm if they can see the slides with the title, why is this the school of science and engineering? Can you see my slides now? Okay, very good, wonderful. Okay, all right. Now, um, as I said, I mean, this is hurriedly put. And uh, when you hurriedly put something together, I mean, Google is the first thing you do and try to find some things. So when I uh, went in the morning, I found this very interesting image. And, uh, and, and, in some people's mind, this is how science is versus engineering. Right? I'm pretty sure this is what would be on many, uh, many of you uh, of, of your minds as well. So normally people think of science like, like the situation which is being portrayed here. Well, here is a scientist who is trying to balance these uh, couple of forks of uh, tip of the glass using a coin. So I mean, that's, that's pretty clever. You can do that. That's great. But what is it good for? But that's not what the scientist is mostly worried about. I mean, I can, I can, I can demonstrate that I can do this. This is within the realm of the physical laws of nature. And that's great. Now here comes the engineer. Well, if you really want to hang these forks off this uh, glass, why don't you just take a piece of duct, duct tape and just wrap it around it? And uh, normally, I mean, that's that, that's how people perceive about engineers and and they perceive about scientists. That scientists, they they just do your makhutul awasam ke log hote hain. They're not interested in applications. They, they just want to demonstrate that we can do this and that can do But engineers, well, they, they are lesser minds. They don't know anything about science. And uh, just as this duck shape tape sort of shows, they just come to some place and they start doing some things. And they are mostly interested in useful things. They are not so much interested in things which are curiosity. Uh, and this is what we will try to demonstrate. That a scientist may a engineer be majud hona chahiye. And uh, of course, every engineer should, uh, uh, should know a lot about science. And that, 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 that's the main thing. So, first of all, once again, these are things which are taken off the web. I've given a link here as well. Uh, this article is a good read. You can, you can go and, and, and read for yourself. So, first of all, I'll just read it off that engineers do what they do because they want to solve some real world problems. So, I mean, as plain as that, that's the main motivation. We want to go there and change the world. We want to make the the world better and all, and that's our motivation. It's not understanding nature. Understanding nature makes it uh, uh, quite easy for us to solve those problems, right? Of the natural world, of course. But then when you talk about the world out there, it's not just the physical elements. I mean, you have to understand the social context of the problem, 
the the societal sort of uh, makeup i mean and then you go into non scientific uh, domains of knowledge as well so there you go and then what about the scientists uh, as the <laughs> the previous image uh, kind of showed that what drives scientists is the pursuit of knowledge itself and well how does the universe work and then you apply the scientific method to uh, uh, refine their answer so the science is very closely tied to this particular method which is not very old like like technology is very old people have been making uh, huge engineering marvels for thousands of years but the scientific method that you will be exposed to uh, when you will come to our science courses i mean that's maybe a few hundred years old or or, or, or they have, that method has been refined just just very very recently in in the, in the human history so it's a very peculiar way of looking at the natural world and and deducing results and of course the, the scientists and the engineers they draw from each other uh another quote science is about knowing and engineering is about doing now this is again uh, a quote by a famous person that i uh, i think it's pointless to uh, to talk about that person here but i like the quote because i mean it really talks about this uh, these two key concepts knowledge which is very dear to science uh, and, and 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 scientists hum use urdu mein ilm keh sakte hain in in a very sort of a broad way but also capacity isko istitaat kehte hain to be able to go out there and do things और ये इस्ताद जो है वो साइंटिफिक भी हो सकती है और इल्म जो है वो इंजीनियरिंग का भी हो सकता है सो वंस अगेन दीज आर ओवरलैपिंग कॉन्सेप्ट्स एंड आई थिंक द इफ यू रियली वांट टू मेक वन वर्सेस द अदर आई मीन दीज आर द टू 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 सॉर्ट ऑफ ब्रॉड वेज ऑफ थिंकिंग अबाउट इट सो दैट्स प्रीटी मच क्लियर नाउ आई विल नॉट गो मच टू टू मच इनटू फिलॉसफी हियर आई नो इट्स योर फर्स्ट डे और कोई इतना कोई लंबा चौड़ा मेरे ख्याल में फलसफे की लेसन की जरूरत नहीं है so um let's let's just see um how these two uh, sit with respect to each other i'll take you to a virtual tour uh, and once again i regret ki aap hamare sath maujood nahi hai is building mein so if you could have come today you would have looked at the school of science and engineering aur uske mathe ke upar ye bada bada likha bhi hua hai ki it's a school of science and engineering so you take the elevators and you try to go to the second floor so when you arrive at the second floor that's our department of electrical engineering अच्छा जब आप इस डिपार्टमेंट में दाखिल होंगे तो व्हेन यू कम आउट ऑफ द एलिवेटर्स दे आर एक्चुअली टू विंग्स सो द डिपार्टमेंट इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू विंग्स एंड सो इफ यू गो ऑन द राइट कॉरिडोर दैट्स वन विंग एंड द लॉट ऑफ फैकल्टी आर देयर लैब्स आर देयर एंड देन यू कैन गो टू द लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द एलिवेटर्स एंड देन देयर इज अ होल विंग दीस विंग्स हैव बीन नेम्ड सो वन ऑफ द विंग हैज बीन नेम्ड एज द मैक्सवेल विंग एंड द अदर वन हैज बीन नेम्ड एज द टेस्ला विंग So whenever you enter the building next time, try to look up these names, and um, they're, they're, they're beautifully decorated, and some uh, uh, some descriptions may also you you would also be able to find. Any guesses? Why do we call these wings as Maxwell wing and the Tesla wing? I would like to provoke some uh, uh, answers if if possible. Anybody? Maybe you can type on the chat box or. So let's start with Maxwell. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. So I, I, I th thought <laughs> you, you're already there. You're already there. So from the chat box, I can see that uh, you are very well aware of both of these guys. But for, for people who come in, and this happens all the time, uh, first of all, um, they think that maybe <laughs> it's the Australian player, <laughs> Maxwell. Uh, well, I mean, like he, he's famous, but not not that famous, I guess. Uh, and oh maybe it's a business school so uh, uh, lums is a management sciences university and then there is this very famous brand maxwell house maybe they gave a lot of funding and that's how uh, universities get their wings name so maybe that's the reason no that's that's that, that, that's exactly not the reason and similarly many people think with regard to tesla that it is actually the tesla company maybe who has given us some money or maybe we derive inspiration from elon musk or something that's absolutely incorrect and as you are as you are saying <laughs> and somebody is saying elon wing uh those were not our inspirations the inspirations were exactly the people that you are referring to so our two inspirations come from these two great people uh james clark maxwell and nikola tesla and a scientist and an engineer as as you would like to Uh, keep these people apart but we as an engineering department have absolutely no shame in naming one wing over a scientist because maxwell's work is as much 
fundamental to electrical engineering as Tesla's engineering is. And that's really the, the spirit. Um, let's go a little bit uh, down into what Maxwell did for, for engineering. Uh, I mean, why did one name? And as some of you have rightly pointed out, that uh, well, I'm just reading here. Maxwell is one of the people who contributed to the theory of everything, combining electricity and magnetism. Great, yeah, yeah. So he was right behind Einstein and Newton as maybe the top three or four scientists of all time. Unification was a big thing that he did, electromagnetism. And these are the four equations that he was really famous for. And they actually laid down the foundation for electromagnetics and then all of the electrical engineering that came after. So, I mean, in that sense, we are very much thankful to the scientific work that was done by uh, Maxwell. But did he do, do anything useful? When he, were, he was doing all of this, uh, uh, this work, did you think of any applications? Surely, yes. Maybe not many of you know about this work by Maxwell. This was his work on governors, the analysis of the steam engine. How, how do we regulate the speed of a speed engine? And believe it or not, uh, this particular analysis it actually led to autonomous systems, robotics, feedback control systems, uh, drones, and, and so on. I mean, the entire field of automation actually rests on one of the first analysis that Maxwell actually did around these steam engines. So the engineers built these steam engines, and then Maxwell was the one who actually analyzed how they actually work. And then, then engineers, they, they, they basically extended the uh, 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 sort of the analysis to complicated machines like, yes, you're right. Uh, I am telling you that Maxwell inspired drones because uh, he actually did this feedback control analysis. And this is a conversation we'll have when, when, when you, will, you will meet us. So surprise, right? I mean, you didn't know that Maxwell had, had anything to do with drones. He, he, he had. I mean, he was the very first uh, uh, person to analyze these feedback control systems. Now, on the other hand, I mean, if you talk about uh, Tesla, and I have just a few minutes, so I just uh, wind up very quickly. I mean, Tesla, as you know, I mean, he was a genius. Of course, Euler was a genius as well. Thank you, Tesla. But I mean, we are not talking about a mathematician here. Um, Euler has a very interesting story as well, but I'll not go into Euler's engineering feats. But Tesla was a real engineer. I mean, by, by all accounts. So we do call him as an engineer and not a scientist. And uh, well, I mean, the AC... Uh, alternating current distribution system, electricity that we take for granted at this time, that was a huge feat. There was a big debate around uh, at the turn of the century on whether we should do AC machines versus DC machines, AC generation versus DC generation. And uh, people like Edison and Tesla, they were at, really at the forefront of this debate. And Tesla really was at the, at, at the forefront of it all. And he was the one who, uh, who made, it, made, made it all happen. The second image that you can see here, I mean, that's a remote controlled board. I mean, think of this guy. I mean, 120 years back, I mean, he's, he, he is working out drones but way ahead of his time. He was also a very big failure. So uh, I think one, one, one person, he is, uh, um, think, well, well, why didn't we name it after Edison and, and Tesla? Uh, I, I think we, maybe we can one day talk, talk, talk more about it. But I think this is very important to know that I mean, with, great, with these great minds, especially engineering minds, I mean, it's not always about success. So, so Tesla's story is also very tragic as well. He was not recognized during his time. He was thinking of things way ahead of his time. Even if he was born today, he was way ahead of his time. So his last project was where he wanted to wirelessly transmit electricity across continents. Uh, wireless power transfer, have you heard about this? I mean, only now, People are working on this idea for charging mobile phones. He was thinking like maybe 500 years ahead of his time. And he was, he was thinking about that, well, I can do this. And he was very clear, this is all scientific. Look at the quotation that I'm showing here. So after he was and he was broke and everybody was sort of ridiculing him, he said, well, it's not a dream. It's a simple feat of scientific electrical engineering, only expensive. And then he says, uh, Andi, Bayman, or Buzdil Dunya. concept you are not taking it up. So he died broke. Now, he had a, quite a bit of a scientist in, within him as well. So while he was building this tower, I mean, he was actually playing with all these scientific principles. And it, it was, uh, a, a, I mean, he, he had a very deep knowledge of science. And he was applying the scientific method all the time. 
So from, I think from both of these examples, you can see how intermingled these concepts are. So while uh, Maxwell is very much a scientist, the scientist of the highest caliber, and Tesla would be ranked as an engineer, of course, an engineer of the highest caliber. Uh, I think both of them, they had something to do with science and something to do with engineering. And I think that's the spirit that uh, I want you to take uh, with you. Um, we will continue this conversation in one of our courses. Uh, this is called W100. This is a required course uh, for all majors. Sorry, math majors out there, bio majors out there. <laughs> you will be, you will be uh, needing to take this course as well. Um, so I think I will stop here uh, with the Dr. Sabi's permission because I think I'm, I'm a little over time, but hopefully I've been able to at least motivate you uh, to think about this. Uh, I will pass on these slides, try to read on more about these two personalities in your free time, although I think you will be very busy very soon. Uh, in the article that, uh, that I've, I've cited there, that's also a good read. There is actually a little interview from Elon Musk embedded in there as a, as a, as a, as a YouTube video. Uh, there's a couple of minutes you can very quickly take a look at. And uh, that's all from my side. If you have any questions, you can email me and you can come and meet me whenever, inshallah, things are open. And over to uh, uh,